I've been getting this message that screen sharing has been disabled to share open system preference. No, maybe it's something that you've got in your system. Why don't you upload uh, the, the PowerPoint? Are you able to hear me? Shall we start? can upload your slides uh, from the slide icon. Are you able yes, to hear me now? Now I can hear. Okay, okay. I am getting my slides? echo. Yeah, okay. I'm I actually getting my echo. Was it okay? I think your mic is closer to your speakers or uh, you have the speaker, you have the mic from your system? Yes. yes. Ah, that's fine. You've got your mic from your earphones closer to the mic. So there's a yeah. No, but just move I, away. I, 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 no, you need to move your mic away. Or the phone? Do you have the phone close to you with uh, Facebook open? No. No, I think now you're fine. Now you're fine. I think now you're fine. Is it better? No, no, there's a. <laughs> no, there's an echo. I think you're using the mic. Uh, or there are two mics which are close to each other. I think I'm using the from computer. I'm not using any headphone. You're not using the headphone. Can you use the headphone and the mic so that we don't okay. use. Now this is clear. This is better? Yeah, this is much better, much better. Yeah, yeah I think this is better. Right. So, so have you uploaded the slides? I'm just trying with that. Um, okay, okay, do that. So in the meanwhile, I just... Uh, I can yeah, upload yeah. PPT or just PDF? You can upload P PDF, PPT, whichever you want. No problem. Okay. Okay, it is getting uploaded. Is it live on Facebook right now? Just go in. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, maybe after five, ten minutes. Yeah, we're streaming live on Facebook. So let me uh, just do all the. 
ચાલુ છે Okay, let me uh, just introduce. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome, uh, welcome to another day of excellent webinars uh, from Get Well with Homeopathy, uh, which is uh, this series of events were thought about by Genoveva and Uta. Uh, excellent ones where we get to hear speakers from. different countries about the way homeopathy touched their lives and what makes homeopathy special to them and for this evening uh, don't be fooled by this young doctor here he's a young doctor but he's got a lot of information to share with us a lot of knowledge a lot of experience and uh, we look forward to dr pankil sharing what made homeopathy special to him thank you so much for your introduction i'm just trying to upload the slides yeah yeah so tell us how did you get into homeopathy till the slides come on i told you homeopathy uh, was uh, i used to take a treatment from some homeopaths but i was okay. fond of that you know white sweet pills what's that about i was very curious okay. to know about that But then gradually, uh, my father used to study. He is a feng shui consultant, but he okay. had a fond idea about homeopathy. So I mm. actually wanted to be in his field, but I land up into this. <laughs> but okay. now I'm trying to integrate both this field of homeopathy and feng shui. So that's what I did in this platform. Okay. I think last month when Uta and Gino Viva were kind enough to. give me a platform to speak about this topic so that was oh, for, for the first time i spoke about that okay feng shui is an interesting uh, subject by itself yeah so a classical feng shui you know like the balance oh, okay. of five okay. elements and how you oh. produce harmony and that's what we do in homeopathy in homeopathy very similar to that isn't it yes to study Then the individual have... yeah his yes, unique qualities and mm. give them the balance through remedy and over there right. it is to do with your architecture of house right okay so there you have a compass here you've got the repertory yes absolutely <laughs> okay so we've got you on now and uh, we'll get you started off right away Okay. All right. So is my slide visible? Yes, it is visible. All right. I'll just check it back in a minute. Yes, your slide is visible. You can go ahead. Okay. Is it visible to you yet? Thank you. Yes, yes, I Now oh, this is an interesting subject dreams. Ah. Uh, shall I do it full screen? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay. So good evening from India to everyone over there. uh i thank you dr karthik and uh, uta and genoveva so i spoke about homeopathy and feng shui last month now today i'll be speaking about a different dimension about what is homeopathy how is it special and a different dimension about using dreams in homeopathy and what does that signify so different speakers have spoken about the benefits of homeopathy in this platform in the last week so and as i see there are a lot of homeopaths and a lot of patients 
who are watching this session. So I would be speaking from both the sides as to what a patient should come with an expectation to a homeopath and what does a homeopath thinks while he is into the case. So I always tell the patient, give me a journey of your life through your eyes. So I want to know everything about you. And that's what is the peculiarity about homeopathy. It's a highly individualized science. It's, it's a tailor-made science. What does it mean? Is that each and every one needs a remedy which touches its core. We can't give the same remedy to everyone. Now, homeopathy is popular as in this time of crisis in COVID, it, it's been so popular that the demand has increased. People from all across are, are approaching about what is the role of homeopathy and how can it help to boost immunity, isn't it? So what happens is when the demand is more, we need a highly qualified homeopaths to cater this. And that's where is the era of homeopathy, where we need to integrate with different paths together and, and mark a new horizon. So homeopathy works on a definite principle. And this principle is like your slide. So homeopathy, the results are reproducible. If you know a different techniques of how to elicit and how to understand that person. You see the patient is in distress. He has a multitude of complaints. He's seeking an answer from you. So you need to understand what is his state of mind? What is the disease happening? What are the reports saying? So analyze everything. And then you need to go a step further. And that's where we see that homeopathy is a holistic science. We treat mind, body, and physical. So it's like a mixture of both to, to, to know the root cause of each complaint. So the disease name per se is not important. What is important, how that happened. That very pattern inside you, which is causing this illness is important to understand. So that's why I say homeopathy is a complete system in itself, giving you a holistic approach in the most subtle way. There are different myths that if homeopathy is slow, does homeopathy contain steroids? A lot of such myths, this myth. And maybe slowly I would like to address on those uh, aspect as well. And those who have known homeopathy for years understands that it's, it's, it's a very genuine science which has a solution for all disease. Now what makes it unique is the case taking process. So how many of you have taken homeopathy treatment so far? If you are live watching it, put it in comment box. And if you have any queries, you can put it and I would be happy to address if I can. So you see in this slide that case taking is like knowing you. Imagine when was the first time you were dating or you know you were meeting your partner. Was that first meeting enough to understand her or him? So that's what it is. We need to understand you. So when a patient comes that I have a diabetes, treat me. That's not enough. That doesn't work that way. What we need to understand is explain what is the type of diabetes you have? How did that happen? What's your lifestyle? How is this tag of being a diabetic affecting you? We need to see everything. And that's what is case taking. Case taking means to take the entire case. It's not like a traditional approach where you just see the symptoms and prescribe, which happens for the acute case. But in a chronic case, you need to dig out. And a true case taking is one which happens easily. So the roads are different. That's what is the different techniques, the different methods we learn. But ultimately, it is to reach to the end. That's the core of that person. That subtle thing which needs to be changed. And that change will bring about a big change in his entire life. So a lot can happen, you know, when you are 
with your homeopath. And that's what I say, you know, show me your life, show me your struggles, show me your difficulties, your stressful situations in your life. And that's where we need to ask a lot of such questions. And that, it, so all the patients who are watching it, this, this you might have experienced, yeah? And so what happens is in our brain, what is happening is we are trying to analyze you from different perspective. So slowly, gradually, I would also share with few case examples how this is evident. And one such aspect is dreams. So we first speak about your illness. What is the risk factor involved? What is the scope about it? How did that happen? What are the symptoms happening? Apart from that, what are the mind symptoms? How's your approach? What stresses you? What puts you in stress? How does that you react in that stressful situation? So all this are helping us to make a kind of a portrait. It's kind of a, you know, we are just artistically sketching you. And this help us to find a remedy which matches this state. So when you go to an endocrinologist or pediatrician, you may get a multitude of medicines. But here we try to find out what is that pattern which matches each of your symptoms, each of your illness. And in that one, one of the aspect, like you know, in the puzzle, there is one part which is dreams. Now, this dreams is very important. In traditional approach, if you see in different mythology, in different uh, books, they have mentioned what is the importance of these dreams. I'm a giant. So in our scriptures also, before when Lord Mahavira, the 24th Tirthankar was born, his mother had 14 symbolic dreams. And that symbolic dreams was what which made a different process and made him realize that what is going to come. Similarly, we all have got different dreams, isn't it? Some are very vivid dreams or something which is happening in our routine life, but we don't understand why is it happening? What is making that happen? And dreams have been always been a mystery. There were different researchers who had spoken about these dreams. So Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, also believe that it's a manifestation of some imaginary events happening. So it's a rapid eye movement, REM part of the sleep. It's when this happens, process happens. In homeopathy, we don't have to manually take in, we don't take the dreams what you get, but we try to understand what is the experience of the dream in you. Say for example, this is the common type of dreams one has. You know, about dreams of teeth falling, dreams of flying, dreams of, you know, you, you are giving an exam, but you missed out, catching a train, dream of being naked, dream of falling, you know. And there are certain dreams which happens again and again and again and again. That's what is important. If there is a repetitive dream in childhood or maybe now, it signifies some part of you. It could be your subconscious mind. It could be a reflection of your attitude, something which is there within. I would share one interesting case. So there was a boy, a school going boy, who was brought to me with the complaints of bedwetting. Almost every night, they must have tried all possible treatment from pediatrician and then was asked to, miss, uh, to meet a urologist. He had this spells of profuse urination, like he used to urinate every night in the bed, which was in the first three hours of his sleep. So for example, if he slept at 10 p.m., then at 3 a.m. he would pee, and it was profuse, offensive. He was asked to modify diet, avoid drinking juices, you know, water, like what routine we suggest, but nothing helped. But, you know, in a very giggling and uh, embarrassed way, the child said, <laughs> Doctor, you know what? I, I get a dream of pee 
Hmm? No, I get a dream of P. Now that was important and very unique. So now how we understand is we need to find a remedy which has the symptoms and all this unique dream. So homeopathy is all about this uniqueness. We need to collect all these gems. You know, it's like a game of Mario. You might have played that you keep on collecting coins while you travel. So in case taking also, when you are with your homeopath, try to elaborate your case. Explain in such a detail that he is able to understand you with that depth. All your secrets should be revealed. So that dream which he had was of urination and that's when he was urinating. Isn't it strange? There might be 20 cases of bedwetting, but none of them would say so unique thing. That's what make it peculiar. So what happens in my mind is I try to pick up these symptoms. So urine. So this is the repatriation chart. So repatriation chart is like, you know, the set of symptoms you have. We try to match it with different remedies. So the first symptom I said was bladder involuntary that the urine happens at night with a dream of urination. And this 10 means there are 10 medicines in the entire multitude of Materia Medica, which is a set of symptoms. It has this symptom. So that was one bladder, involuntary urination, incontinence of bed, sleep first in, and then dreams of urinating. And now there were three remedies which match this completely. Sepia, creosote, and sulfur. So now we need to go to a materia medica and understand it which remedy would suit him best. And you see this clearly in Fatak Materia Medica dreams of urinating and uresis in the first part of the night. Now, this perfect match is something which a skillful homeopath would be able to do from his practice. And that's what makes a big, big shift. Few doses of this remedy, creosote, helped him completely. And never ever he had a, a different, a, a recurrent episode of dream, and neither the bedwetting episode. So you see this Fatak repertory, dreams, dreams of dreams, urinating involuntary, dreams of urination with the remedies creosote. So I had one more patient who had started with this bedwetting, but in her case, the cause was different. The cause was that she was reprimanded. Like she was scolded by the principal of the school that why didn't you did this homework? You are not going to be allowed in the class anymore. And that created a kind of a panic and fear. And ever since that day, she had this bedwetting episode. So that doesn't come very apparently when you take the case. You need to dig out, you need to persist. And in that silence, the patient would speak up. Now, this might be one of the cause and that you need to catch. So that patient, the second one, got a remedy opium. So the opium in the homeopathic uh, medicine potency was given and that helped. Now when you see the literature for the homeopaths, you see in the Fartak repertory, urination, involuntary, fright from, and the remedy is opium and sepia. You need to differentiate with the detail of the case. And that remedy helped. So you see, homeopathy is a science of uniqueness. Something like this image. Can you see a cigarette in this image? Can you find out? It's like the I see what a mind knows. So un unless you see that pattern, you won't get it. And you need to study your... Your, your homeopathy with such a great interest and detail that it becomes evident. Can you see this? Are you all with me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, 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 we can hear you. Go on. Okay. <clears throat> so when you see this, this is the secret. Can you see now? When this light was seen by me first, I couldn't realize. But then when you see this, now 
you can see this right through the brick and you won't ever forget so next time when this comes you would realize yes this is what need to be seen so it's a science of exactness and completeness so homeopathy is a science of exact and complete details let me demonstrate this with one more interesting case this this might be one of my very interesting case in my early practice so i'm practicing since seven years and this this may be in my first two years of practice i had a case of atopic dermatitis and eczema i'll show this skin this this was how it looked so the patient came with a complaint of extremely dry skin it was severely itching there was all red eruptions on the hand on the back of the neck the skin was red and had very small areas of bleeding due to extreme violent scratching there was this dry skin all over the body and it looked as if you know hot art hot iron was touched in that area the patient says that my skin is worst compared to all others nothing is good in me if others said it's very sensitive like her she also has hypothyroid since 10 years chronic backache and recurrent cold which settles in the middle year causing the internal inflammation she was extremely sensitive to sun and sunburns so now this is the kind of a first 15 minutes what happens in consultation a patient would come because he is is known that you know the, the doctor would expect something to know about what is bothering her now this would be the first 10 minutes of your practice allow her to speak completely wait don't be in a hurry to you know jump to conclusion just go with the flow ask her to tell little bit more tell me please little bit more thoda aur bataiye tell me it's all your space i explain them you know it's it's a process where we would be listening you completely it's your space feel free to speak whatever you have and we will try to help you show me your life through your eyes i need to know and that's when they would slowly slowly open up so this was the kind of atopic skin she says further that she has very melancholic mood it's very sad depressive mood extremely dependent on relation and she was very reserved she was very sentimental she liked music extremely attached to her late mother who now used to come in her dreams she said i get terrible dreams i'm too much worried about people who are close to me i fear they shouldn't get hurt by me no one should get away from me that would be the biggest disaster in my life and this has happened in my life the people whom i love the most disappears now this was something sensitive part in her case i asked her to describe more that's when she told me doctor you know what what upsets me is whenever i wake up my i had always aches a lot of dreams which happens i said please go on describe me Now she had all kind of bizarre dream dreams of floods dreams of crowd and these dreams used to keep on happening again and again if you guys have seen my first video what i shared last month i showed a case of a migraine lady who had a typical dream now she also had one interesting dream which was about floods and this used to happen many times almost twice or thrice in a week slowly i made her realize that can you explain me what ha- what is happening in your life situation so it was about her relationship issue relationship with her loved ones so whenever there was some quarrel or fight she used to dream that and the dream was about she has fallen into a flood and there is kind of a a, a height where there is a waterfall and there is nothing to catch hold on and she is just flowing and is about to go down she used to get dreams of her friends who have died long back dreams of festival dreams of party those were the happy dreams but very rare a visual was when i said you know just walk me through your life your struggle 
she, she explained me that uh, image which comes is like there is a storm which is going to come there is breeze happening it's an evening no one on the beach and the water waves is just flowing i said go on i can also see that there is a a a, a, a downfall a kind of a cliff from where i am just going to fall i'm not able to stop my boat and i'm just about to get drowned and this was a peculiar dream which used to happen again and again now when certain things happen this often you need to understand it's it's somewhere related to a deeper part of her life so when i spoke about her life situation she said the relationship is one of the major issue to connect i'm very reserved i can't mix up easily and the people who are near to me if something happens to them i am tense that would be the worst day of my life the fear that something would happen always tries more than her capacity to care about it she was a very wonderful person suppress anger she couldn't speak she couldn't try she couldn't show her difficulties very adjusting nature and religious fear if her loved ones would go away and will try every means to maintain so now this was the case so got it so initial 15 minutes would be about the complaint and then slowly just go with the flow whatever is happening now when you get this you need to fit the puzzle in such a way that it makes a sense so that what we call totality and totality we arrange the important aspect of her case and try to match that with a remedy which would help her so this was the totality which i made and when we repertorized this was very interesting all the dreams what he had i tried to analyze and this was the group of remedies which was coming and you see this natrum carb coming so strong what is interesting is also the magnesium group of remedies which is just next to it covering these cases and if you see the totality of skin again it showed natrum carb eruption which was on the bends folds eruptions which were dry sun aggravates and about her nature personality which again matched to natrum carb so now when you try to assess from different materia medica you see that natrum carb is given in this soul of remedy as natrum carb is very sensitive especially to separation from the beloved and breaking the relationship isn't it so strange and it covered the overall physical mental and the dream totality that's where i made natrum carb as her prescription in ascending potency you see natrum carb is a woman who just needs relationship which is very dependent and it's one relation one person and she is dependent and there is tremendous fear and sadness with a sense of isolation which comes that's what is the core of natrum you natrum carb and this natrum carb startling from fright what does that mean that she has a very very few relationship and whenever that relationship is endangered that's where the trifles and the fear comes after giving this medicine in follow up you also need to do some process make her advise them guide them that you know the feeling it's just a feeling don't become an emotion witness is allow it and release it and that's when you know slowly they would come out a follow up by the end of 2 years of treatment not only that her skin complaint resolved completely her thyroid levels also showed significant improvement she was on 125 mg of eltroxin which slowly was tapered down to 25 microgram and that the skin was completely solved there was no relapse after that even the mentally the dreams the dreams went away that was something very interesting so do we have remedies for dream no but i have a medicine for that person who has that dream and by giving this you can see in follow up no other pathy would have such such medicines which can also treat dreams anyways that was a symbolic of some part of her life so that's what you touch that's the depth 
what homeopathy can touch. So now mentally she is calm, much fresh. She found a proper channel and direction in her life. And is involved in a lot of religious activities and social work. The dreams have vanished. And now she gets more of this pleasant time. This was the photograph before and after the treatment. The neck, the hand, you see the folds of the elbow. It's a very typical area. And then she had a wonderful situation. If you see this natrum cup for the homeopaths, all the budding homeopaths, do this homework. See the dream chapter from different repertory. I'll show you the different rubrics. And when you see this dream of floods and dreams of water, make sure you think about magnesium, natrum, senicula. These are the remedies which would come. But the theme of natrum is different from magnesium. You see magnesium? It's like a state of an infant which is dependent on the mother for nourishment, care, security and support. The feeling of orphan, which has been written in lectures of Materia Medica by Kent, that's the feeling. It's like a child who is completely dependent, confused, and with repressed emotion. They are not able to express what is happening. And this unexpressed voice comes in the form of dreams. You see this? Dreams, delusion, fear can be taken together. So this dreams of being angry, anxious, animal, accidents, dead bodies, relatives, a lot of this dead, the dreams of dead people, dead relatives is in magnesium. You see in the magnesium, the typical symptom is too many symptoms and when they wake up, they are unrefreshed. They're not fresh because of the dreams. If you make out the list, there are different, there are, there are multitude of rubrics under dreams, which is covered by natrum and, mag, and magnesium and natrum. This was the dreams, which is common between magnesium, natrum group of remedies. Once you know this thing, you would be applied to, a, you to apply in the practice. Now, this is the dream of calcarea. Dreams which are frightful, anxious, dreams of dead people, fear of snake, fear of ghost, fear of animals. Calcarea is an insecure and a fearful remedy. And that is also reflected in the dreams and fears. So when you understand a remedy from this different, different approach, it becomes clear. It's like, you know, your favorite song, just by a simple tune of five seconds, you are able to catch which song is that. That's what happens with practice. With few symptoms, you are able to get the overall gist. Dr. Shankar used to say, if in the first 10 minutes, if you are not clear about the idea of the patient, that means something is missing in your case taking. You need to have a perfect grip. And that's what happens with practice. You don't know when that shift will happen. It's like, when we were students, I used to remember everything was like a confusion. You see one remedy, you feel that's you. You see another remedy, you feel that's you, that's you. But slowly, slowly, you feel everything is there in everywhere. Now that's what it is. You need to now go more further. Understand each remedy from that depth. It's like being consistent. And don't take the dreams just as it is you see in the repertory dreams of car dreams of casino so the patient said i had a dream of casino you don't take it as that bare meaning what you need to understand is what is the experience of that casino say for example dreams of cars many people many kids would say you know dreams of car but you need to understand what he means by that so there was a child who said car, I would have limousine, you know, people would be behind me. My car would be the most shiniest car ever. It would be a golden car. You see the pride in that. You see the delusion of wealth in that. So you understand that pride and wealth kind of remedy for him. And there was the other child who said, you know, I would like to have the most 
slow car. I said, why slow? I have a fear that if the brake fails, what would happen? If that car, if somebody just walked under my car, what would happen? So this is the fear what he has. So don't take a rubric about car, but see what is the meaning beneath it. So you have dreams of God and heaven. You see this rubrics below? So we have different dreams of heaven. We have this dreams of being persecuted, perceived. Now these are the kind of a dreams what I had tried to categorize, which was found in different different patients in my practice. So I'm just giving a view of visual idea, which you can you know do this homework because this would be very interesting. Dreams of ghost. Someday I would like to share about this dream and delusion of being in a parallel world. I had a case who felt he is living in a parallel world. He could hear the strange voice, somebody is going to kill him. He used to lock himself up in the bathroom for hours together. He tried all possible tranquilizers and angiolytics, but nothing could help. Now this you need to understand, how did that happen? What is the process? So that's why all psychiatric cases come out wonderfully with homeopathy. Dreams of snakes. Dreams of snakes. And what is interesting is Lacan is a remedy which has many features of this fear of snakes. So, so it's not just Ophelia's or snake group of remedies. One of the Lacan should be thought when you get this recurrent dreams of snakes. Dreams of different colorfuls, different or are different. You know, most of the people couldn't realize what are the what was the color in the dream. You see, people would say, oh, sorry, I don't remember my dream. Somebody would say, I remember dream. But none of them would be able to recollect if they could see something which was colorful. But people who get this colorful dream are someone like drug group of remedies, Traxicum and Helonium. They have the most different type of dreams. So dream cannot be current. You know, dream, dream and dream. I would say good dreams. Because dreams are something which would make your vision come true. So make use of this time. Practice homeopathy. Learn it with by with your heart. And I'm sure the success would come to you. So this was something what I wanted to share about a different dimension about homeopathy. Remember this, this photo? You may never forget this now. So keep following. So if you are, if you have not met homeopath in your life, have a good homeopath in your life because he would help you in your all bad and worst situation, and and bring about a big shift in your life. And if you are a student, make this journey so beautiful that that you like every part of it. Learn from different homeopaths. Learn different perspectives. It doesn't matter whatever methods you follow. Ultimately, it's you and your patients who are going to get benefit. So make sure you give your enough to this homeopathy and everything would come back to you. So I think my colleague now would take session. Thank you so much for your time. Hope it was wonderful. And if there are some more queries, I would be happy to take it. Thank you, Dr. Pankal. It was uh, wonderful to understand how you can actually arrive at the remedy by the dreams. Thank you. It, it's a large subject. It's, it's a huge subject, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a huge. I can take one full day on that. <laughs> okay. So maybe we will have a one day summit on dreams sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Are there some queries? Uh, not that I can see. Uh, okay. Okay. So, thank you once again, and we hope to see you again. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. In the meanwhile, we'll wait for Dr. Yamani to come in. Uh, she's okay. Just, yeah. How do you come out of this? Yeah, I'll, I'll take it off. Yeah.
Thank you. So I think Dr. Yami is just checking in. She should be visible anytime now and probably get her to upload her PowerPoint. Uh, just an interesting thing that I wanted to discuss, to talk to you. How would you relate magnesium to water? Magnesium. When you dream of water, uh, you were mm -hmm. you were relating it to magnesium. Yeah. yeah. I thought it so, would be more natrium uh, than a magnesium, right? I mean, because yes. when you live by the sea, your your Aggravations by living by the by the sea would be natural, right? So yes. So in magnesium, we see like, like magnesium salts are present in seawater. So seawater has natrium, magnesium, and sericula. You know, sericula is a combination of calcium, magnesium, sulfur, and natrium. So all these dreams we see is covered by magnesium and natrium. I have seen one patient. Who has this repressed feeling and fear of something danger is happening? Then that's where I see magnesium comes close. And whenever there is a feeling of something is getting away, disconnected or isolation, that's where I see natrium comes close. All right, okay, that's interesting. Thank you for that. Just wanted to clarify on that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's an amazing subject for me, but you can go on studying, you know, there's no limit to it. Yeah. Oh, there we have Dr. Yamini. Hello, Dr. Yamini. Yeah, Mr. Karthik, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, let me just uh, send a message out. Can you see me and hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, hello. Yeah, it just takes a while before she registers all of us on the system. Hello. Hello. Yeah. We can see you. We can Mr. see Karthi? you and hear you. Yes, yes, we can see you and hear you. I guess. Yeah, we can hear Mr. you. Karthik is not uh, getting my voice. Pankil, can you? Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes, very clearly. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. So that was a wonderful right. presentation. I loved it. Thank you. I'm looking forward to your presentation now. Thank you. So, um, uh, Mr. Karthik, can I share my screen? Yes, use the screen icon right on top. Okay. You see just next to the video icon. If you click on it, yes. then you can share your screen. So is it visible now, my screen? Yes, it is. Yes, it's coming. Oh, yes. Right. Great. There you are. Yes. So it's all yours, Dr. Yamini. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Ah, oh, it's gone off. It's gone off. Thank you. Uh, you need to start the screen sharing again. It's just yes, gone off. I'm doing that. Yeah, yeah, all right. Okay. So, is it okay now? It's just loading. So, we'll wait for it to load. Yes, it's all right. You can go ahead, you can use your right arrow to move the slides. You don't have to touch anywhere else. Okay. Don't use the pointer, so then you can. All right? Fine, fine. Okay, okay. I'm going to just step out, and the stage is all yours. Oh, thanks a lot. All right. Okay, I'll see you later. Yeah, sure. So, hello, guys and girls. Thank you for joining here on Get Well with Homeopathy. Um, so we are uh, 
talking about how homeopathy is special, what makes homeopathy so special. So like you saw in uh, Dr. Pankel's presentation, that dreams are very important for homeopaths. Likewise, everything related to you or every peculiar detail of yours is very, very important for a homeopath. So I will be also going to talk about what is that which is unique about homeopathy. So uh, I hope you would uh, really like and appreciate my presentation. Myself, Dr. Yamini Ramesh. So tell me what is so different with homeopathy? So we say that homeopathy is a holistic science which treats a man in disease and not the disease of a man. So it means we look up to the whole person as one entity and not parts or collaboration of systems. We don't say it's a you know combination of a cardiac system or nervous system and other systems. We just say this is a human being. So we just look up to the whole person as one entity and not parts. So for every tiny problem, it might be a pimple, it might be a ward or cancer, we have to understand you as a person, as one entity. So this process of knowing a person, knowing a man, is called as case taking in homeopathy. And our founder, Dr. Hanneman, gave clear guidelines about how a doctor should do a case taking. So case taking is a process of knowing a person. So in homeopathy, we need all information regarding your chief complaint. That means your disease, your sensation, your emotion, feelings, physical and mental characteristics, how you perceive a situation, how you react in a specific situation, uh, how you feel about it, what are the modalities. So modalities is like something which, you know, either increases your disease or your complaint or decreases your complaint. So either it is aggravating or ameliorating your complaint. Your past history, your family history, origin of the disease, seat of disease, duration of the disease, progress, that means everything related to you. So we should know everything related to you. And that is our case taking. That is knowing the man. And then only we can treat a person. So now how does it help? So, you know, one might ask that, uh, what is the importance of this case taking? So this I will show you by some case examples. And I guess this will clear a lot about how case taking is important and what is case taking exactly. So this is a case one of uh, hypothyroidism developed after delivery. This is a young lady who has developed hypothyroidism with chronic anxiety. And uh, it has been developed. This hypothyroidism is developed just after delivery. Uh, but anxiety is there. So this is a female of a 29 years old, just delivered a baby before three or four months. And uh, she says that, uh, you know, doctor, I feel a lot of weakness and what I go and uh, this what I go is very frequent. It comes often and I, I fall down with this what I go. I'm, I'm feeling very weak. I feel it might be because of the feeding of my baby, but um, I have to feed very often. So this, these are the chief complaints. This is the disease or complaint uh, with which she has come to me. So then I asked her that, tell me more about yourself. Do you have any stress in your life? So this is one of my favorite questions to people because in homeopathy, we say that uh, we should know person's uncompensated reaction. So that happens in stress most of times. When you are stressed, you're tensed, and uh, you don't think with your mind. You just react. So I asked her, what is the stress? And she said, you know, I did love marriage. So a lot of stress before marriage happened because me and my husband belong to a different religion. And in India, uh, you must be knowing this. Uh, this is a problem. If you do an inter-religion marriage or inter-caste marriage, people doesn't accept that easily. So I was. This lady says that I was always anxious about our marriage. I had to leave my house forever to get married because our religions are different. So a lot of pressure is there. My family created a lot of fuss for for my in-laws. So because of the religion issue. So I'm very stressed. 
now after having this kid we are quite settled but from last 7 8 years since i was in a relationship with the, my husband um i have lot of stress now i have become indifferent to everything now not nothing affects me but of course in last 7 8 years i have tolerated a lot even after having baby i don't feel like feeding him or doing anything like household things so in uh, medical terminology we call this uh, postpartum depression so you know when you feel empty and uh, it is also known as baby blues so you don't you know feel like doing anything so she says that you know i don't feel like feeding him i don't want to do household things my in-laws have very different lifestyle and thinking though i'm adjusting with them but it's too much for me so i asked her that how does it feels to you inside so she said i i have felt unwanted since starting i always feel unwanted in my uh, in-laws house and they have not accepted me so i felt too much lonely inside tired and i'm really tired of doing so many things i used to give tuitions to children in uh, since child then school job i did and then every domestic thing since very young age now i feel i should get some relaxation some rest but uh, now i'm a mother of this baby so i have to do everything so i just don't feel like doing anything that's my problem and then she says that you know we are very happy about having a kid that's not a problem but it's too much to do for me also i'm very irritable at times i get angry easily on you know uh, trivial things i have lot of back pain i feel very sad and uh, her menses were also irregular and she says it might might be because of the feeding which we can understand and uh, she's a very chilly person uh, who takes cold easily who cannot tolerate cold weather and she has this vertigo which is more aggravated in morning and also this nausea sometimes sleep is unrefreshing dream she has this peculiar dream as if i'm lost somewhere so she says that i mean i have seen this many a times that i'm lost somewhere maybe in a jungle or city or uh, places i don't recognize but i'm not in a familiar place so i just want to do i just don't want to do anything just want to sit and do nothing at all i think a lot about everything and uh, this also increases my anxiety so what is the uh, the crux of this case okay so this lady we knew with uh, the whole case taking thing that she has this postpartum depression she has hypothyroidism uh, and her tsh was 17.52 at that time when she came to me in spite of taking a hormonal pill thyronorm 75 ncg this is too much for a lady so also with anxiety issues since last 7 8 years she is very indifferent she has this peculiar dream of being lost and menses irregular and vertigo and weakness so this is a summary of our case and now we have to find out a remedy who suitable for this person this person who has this postpartum depression hypothyroidism and anxiety so you can see my repertory chart like dr pankil has expressed this repertory is a thing where we put all the symptoms and we try to match with a remedy which is suitable for the particular person so i have taken all the possible rubrics uh, the symptoms which she has given me like she is full of Uh, you know cares and worries about how domestic things will happen uh, she was very angry in pregnancy she has this dreams of being lost and uh, can you see the repertory chart where there is one medicine this is a name of a medicine cpia seep and uh, here the number of rubrics are written which i have taken you mind ambition loss of because she has left her job for having a baby handle things anymore cannot she said now i cannot do everything i have done a lot now i'm done i just don't want to do anything i just want to sit and she is very very anxious so this is a remedy cpia which covers all her symptoms and that's how i reached to a remedy after a you know full case taking and cpia is a molasc you can see this picture so i have prescribed cpia 1m two doses every week to her and i told her to come after uh, two weeks 
so then see what happens so she did not come to me after two weeks which i was expecting she came after a month and i asked her how it is so she said a little what i was there but weakness is completely gone and she was looking much better not anxious at all so i said okay i decreased the potency and uh, i said you take cpr 200 only uh, once a day for a month and meet me after that so you can see these reports if you can see the first report 17.5 is the dsh that's in september 2018 and if you can see the second report after three months because the patient was very reluctant to uh, undergo the investigation she did it after three months because she was feeling much better uh, it was 9.61 which was quite reduced without any modern medicine uh, she has taken only homeopathic medicines and just after six months of treatment uh, the thyroid stimulating hormone tsh came completely normal she that did not have any anxiety she started working again she had developed a very very good bond with her kid and with the in-laws as well and now uh, from last one year she's also talking to parents parents have also agreed so that's a wonderful thing about homeopathy that homeopathy just changes the perception of a person and it uh, creates positivity in your life Okay, so what we took into account in this particular case is one is a physical symptoms that is weakness and nausea and uh, otigo and hormonal condition, overall emotional response, response of this person uh, to what is happening outside. So about all this situation, her own response, her internal anxiety about situation, how she perceives the situation, her dreams, her coping up mechanism. So her coping mechanism gives us myism. So myism is fundamentally um, about co how a person is coping up her disease or situation or what is the depth of the disease. This is myism according to Dr. Shankaran. And her way of thinking in particular stress situation. So this we took everything into account. So all these things which we took in the case gives us a fair idea about who this person is and what we need to cure in this person as a whole so we choose a remedy which can cure this disturbance and help the person regain her health so how we reach to a remedy is through her overall symptoms which we obtain from thorough case taking process where we have provided her this is very important guys for homeopaths that we have to provide a person who is coming to you unconditional non-judgmental open space where she can speak about her internal disturbance which is happening in mind and body because person will tell you everything only if he feels that you are not judgmental about it so dr hanneman calls it unprejudiced i always say non-judgmental and unconditional space so let's proceed to case two so this is a, a case of asthma uh, of 20 years female. Uh, she came in a very bad condition and she was not able to breathe at all. Asthma happens very frequently along with cold and cough, have to drink very often, tongue coated, and uh, she was very dysnic, a lot of dysnea. She was not able to breathe. And uh, her uh, attendant told me that uh, cough comes out very frequently because she was not able to even talk with me uh, and she said you know she coughs coughs a lot throughout day and night and the expectoration comes out so she's on inhalers uh, the steroid inhalers but without considerable relief and especially this happens in night after 12 to 1 a.m so here we have this much of case so in earlier case we had all the you know emotional condition the hormonal response here we have very acute case where we have only peculiar characteristics of asthma physical modality is present there which is aggravated in the midnight like you know initially i talked about modality so modality is one thing which either aggravates increases your complaint or decreases your complaint so here we have one peculiar modality that it is more in midnight or after midnight she drinks water often and uh, take that into consideration 
she has this chronic asthma. She's taking steroids, but she does not have that much of relief. And here, in this case, urgent help is required. So, so whatever was peculiar in this case, I took that into consideration. And if you can see my chart, I took only four rubrics. Respiration difficult after midnight, stomach thirst often frequent, and she has this coated tongue, which was my observation. And uh, we have few remedies which are covering, you know, all these symptoms. So first is arsenicum, then antimtart, and then bryonia and sambucus, and also natrimure, lyco, and so on and so forth. So what I did is, because there are four or five remedies which were covering everything, I read all the remedies. And then I read one of, uh, in one of the book known as Gorex Materia Medica, this remedy is antem hours. So I wanted a remedy which is deep acting, quick acting, and covers everything. So this remedy is very useful in emphysema, Gorex wrote here, with excessive dyspnea and cough, much mucus secretion, worse on eating and lying down, and it is aggravated in the midnight pleurisy of left side with exudation okay so chest inflammation of children restlessness with thirst and frustration so i gave her antim hours in 1m and i told her to take this dose one dose every day for next three days and i did the follow-up after three days only and she says after the first dose i was perfectly all right no cough no breathlessness and she was much better and only after three days she stopped all the steroidal inhalers so that was something unique for me so what was the learning in this case so acute case with clear modalities and clear physical symptoms also leads you to the right remedy so let's just a second so let's move to case three. This is a case of a acute hypertension. So this is also a case of a lady who's 36 years old. She came to me and uh, the first thing which she did in my clinic is vomiting. She just, uh, you know, entered my clinic and vomited. And uh, I saw her condition was very bad. She just lie down lie down and uh, the attendant told me that she has this vomiting since morning five six times the vomiting has happened and she came to me almost at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and uh, a lot of nausea was there she had also the vertigo uh, on changing of posture and movement she was very weak she was lying down in my clinic not able to sit and when i saw her her pulse was also very sluggish and weak so when I measured her BP, uh, the blood pressure, it was 190 by 110, which was very, very high. And uh, this much of uh, information I had when she came to me. So, you know, in such type of cases, your observation really helps you a lot. So my observation was when she came into clinic, she vomited. And I saw that the vomitus was greenish in color. And she was very restless in spite of, you know, this we, uh, weakness and what I go. She was very restless. She was moving constantly. So if you can, guess the remedy. Um, and this is what I have done. I uh, use repertory very often. So I took all these rubrics into account. What, what I go reeling, vomiting with, stomach vomiting green, stomach vomiting with thirst. And I found this remedy, Nux Vomica, which we know that Nux Vomica is a very, very restless remedy, very intense remedy, where, you know, uh, the gastric disturbances are there and also a very good remedy for people who are very, you know, angry or restless or uh, like this. So what I did is I gave Nux Vomica 1M and I told her to just lie down for next half an hour so that if the, I because I was, uh, a uh, little worried about her, her BP was too much. So I told her that if the BP doesn't go down, uh, we will take the help of modern medicine. So uh, I gave every 50 minute, 15 minutes, Naxwamika 1M, and I advised her to lie down in the waiting room and see what happened. 
after 10 minutes i took the blood pressure it was 170 by 100 so i was relieved that okay good it has been reduced and uh, then my faith also increased uh, in my dose and my remedy that of course it will heal her for sure after 20 minutes i took the pp it was 150 by 100 mm of hg and after half an hour when she was you know she just uh, uh, stand out and she said you know now i want to go out i said no no uh, just wait i took the bp again it was 130 by 90 so you know we can deal such cases also with very quick result this is a myth that homeopathy is slow homeopathy is not slow you have to uh, pick the right thing and give the right remedy that's the success mantra okay so the learning in this case for me was peculiar symptoms and individualistic expression of the complaint and keen observation are very important for selecting the remedy so this is what we need to do in each case so then let's move to case four so this is a case of a rheumatoid arthritis in male uh, he's 52 years old he came to me and uh, as you all must be knowing that rheumatoid arthritis is a very difficult condition to treat because uh, you know they might develop a lot of pains and uh, they are not able to walk at all and uh, there are many other problems as well so when this person came i knew only that you know he has this RA, rheumatoid arthritis but when i took the case he told me that i have joint pains in all the joints and uh, the breathing was also very heavy. And he told me that, you know, especially in rainy weather, I, I have this breathing issue. And her general aggravation, like the increase of the complaint was in rainy and winter se uh, season. And also the cloudy weather aggravates my joint complaint and my breathing issues a lot. So whenever there are clouds, my joint pain will increase for sure. I know if the clouds are there, I know I'm get uh, this night I won't be able to sleep out of pain. Then itching all over the body whenever it gets wet. So he did not know whether it is allergy or what, but uh, I uh, somewhere I you know uh, believe that it was uh, articaria. Movement was very difficult. Stiffness was there. This much was the case. I asked uh, about other complaints and other things, but I couldn't. Uh, elicit anything else so this is my question to all the homeopathic friends which remedy would you give so you know i have the modalities of rustols i have the modalities of arnica bryonia the movement is very difficult and arsenic also so which to give or mix of all these should be given so what i did is because we always say in homeopathy, don't give local remedy, give a holistic general remedy based on individuality. And that is the, the key to unlock the disease. So we needed a remedy which covers rheumatism, arthritis, lung complaints, and skin complaints. So I searched in my program, Synergy, uh, and then I got this remedy, Pinus Sylvatus. And I gave Pinus Sylvatus and he became okay. So you can read here in Borix Materia Medica, it has it is written that Pinus Sylvatus combines rheumatic, bronchial, and urticarial symptoms. The chest seems thin and to give away. So it has been found of real use in the treatment of weak angles and uh, tardiness in walking in scrofulous and rachitic children. So Pinus Sylvatus is one of the major remedy for rheumatic complaints, but I used it first time for the person who has articaria, bronchial thing, and rheumatic thing. And uh, it was the result was wonderful. Okay, so then I searched in other books also. So you can read this uh, remedy in Clark's characteristics also, uh, where he says, you know, rheumatic, gouty, and paralytic pain in limbs, bones, and joints, stiffness glandular swellings and then chest walls sensitive uh there is a specular feeling of thinness which was of course not there in the patient but he has this asthmatic complaint more in rainy weather and uh, pinus is one of the remedy which comes very close to rustox and bryonia okay so learning in this case was homeopathy case taking is the most important tool for selection of right remedy suitable for person and his problems 
it gives us. So when we do the case taking, what is our motto or objective? So it gives us the general overview of the case. What is happening in the case in a person? What is the disease? Uh, with what disease or complaint the person is coming to you? Since when this is happening? So the duration, just to make a note of everything, I would always say that, you know, whenever you're getting a case, like uh, Dr. Pankhil said, Dr. Shankaran always says that, you know, in first 10 minutes, you know that uh, what is the chief complaint and the most important thing will come to you in first 10 minutes because that's the most important thing for patient. The chief complaint, the modalities, pace, depth of the problem, origin, progress, everything. So you have to make note of everything which patient is telling you. So it, what it will tell you? So it will tell you the magnitude of a problem. How much is the problem? The pace of a patient. What is the pace of a patient? What is the state of a patient? And where he wants to take you? So just don't lead like Dr. Hanneman has given this clear instruction. No leading questions. So if I always tell uh, to uh, this to every homeopath that if you are taking a case and if you are asking about what is your dream and patient is telling you, you know, I crave sweets a lot. So, you know, the patient is talking with the subconscious. Just don't interrupt. Just don't go behind dreams. Just go with craving for sweets. Then he will take you, just trust your patient and he will take you to the right remedy, right kingdom, right sub kingdom. And he would tell you what is to be cured in a case, like Hanuman said, that you should know what is to be cured in a case. So you will get to know from the case taking, whom are you treating? Who is this person? What kind of person this is? Uh, what kind of things affects him or her? What is to be cured? What kind of qualities you want in a remedy? So in like in first case, we wanted a remedy who's very indifferent, who's very worried about who has this mothering nature, who, who is very worried about the children and domestic work and everything. But at the same time, she feels, you know, now I'm not able to do this. That is what CPR is all about. CPR does a lot of lot of domestic work and uh, one point comes where you know it becomes just indifferent with everything so it also you know it will give you what symptoms of blue bricks or you need in the remedy that is also you can elicit from the case taking and finally a right remedy so a lot of people might ask that do we have a set format of case taking i don't know what you think about it just let me know in the comment box but for me answer is no but for collecting the basic data collecting the basic information we use a format i also use a case taking format it helps in collecting a basic data but for e each case we need different type of case taking process so like homeopathy for me case taking also becomes individualistic according to case because you don't get everything in every case so what is the secret of successful case taking? I would say just unlearn to be very conscious. Don't be conscious. Just be open. Open-ended uh, response gives you a lot of things. So you have to be, you know, you have to provide this unconditional space. Just unlearn to be very conscious. Shed off the ego or forget that you know something. Whenever we say we know that, we tend to look for it. So provide unconditional, non-judgmental open space. Don't interrupt patient. Let him take you, guide you to the right remedy. You don't guide him at all. Take interest in every tiny detail of a patient. And my final tip for every homeopath is for a successful practice and successful case taking, we have to be we have to become completely unprejudiced. So how to do that? So you know, I always say this, what I have learned from my masters and uh, from my practices, we have to have a lot and lot of space in our mind, heart and soul and become ready to listen to everything, become ready to listen to what we don't know. If we know the symptoms of, uh, say, polycrest remedies or rare remedies or whatever or kingdom or sub kingdom, you have to, you know, hear with an unconditional thing. Uh, and you provide this mental space, not a physical space. Patients need mental space. Be ready to listen what you don't know, and that will bring you more closer to the similar. For me, case taking itself 
is not only a tool to get the remedy, but most of the times, the case taking process itself becomes a healing tool. So when you take interest in a person's problems, uh, complaints, and every tiny detail, half of the cure happens with case taking itself. So it's a great healing tool. It helps patients to make aware about what is that which is bothering him and has now become a disease. So, you know, that is called as awareness. And when you when you create awareness for a person, it uh, it starts healing there and then. You need you don't need a remedy for that. You might need a remedy later, but case taking or case witnessing is one of the very, very powerful tools to find as well as create similar monk. I would say use its full potential and that will really, really help you. Trust yourself, trust your patient. He has come to you to get well and treat with full trust. You will definitely be able to cure it. That is uh, the main thing which I wanted to convey. So like Buddha said, we are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. So whatever we think, we can you know, do that. So my special thanks to all my masters uh, for, for you know, giving me this insights and helping me uh, you know, in, increase my horizon and practice of homeopathy. And also, I, want, I would really like to thank uh, Gino Viva and Uta and Mr. Karthik for organizing this event. Uh, if you have any questions, you can let me know. Just a second. Yes. So if you have any questions, you can write in the chat box. And uh, I would really love to address them. So Mr. Karthik, is there any question? Hello, is there anyone? I can't hear you. Kartik, I can't hear you. No, I can't even see you. The screen is blank. So guys, whoever are there uh, seeing this live chat, you can just message or ask me. Yes, now I can see you. You can see me. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So uh, I think it was a wonderful uh, talk, Dr. Yamini. Uh, the template which you, which you should not follow, but you should have a template to ask and to receive knowledge from the patient is what yes. can guide you to the, to the remedy. And uh, I think which what you said is so important that people have forgotten, they have lost touch with their own emotions, their own body. So the yes. moment a homeopath asks them uh, things like, do you like a hot water bath, do you like a whole, you know, cold water bath, do you like cold drinks, do you like hot drinks, when the patient goes back home, he starts to think about a lot of things about what he likes and that's a good way for him to connect back to himself which he's yeah. lost you know over the years and whenever whenever we uh, you know ask such such questions or uh, you know talk to him he would really appreciate your interest in him as a person exactly. and he would tell you everything and you know one one thing which i uh, i want to share here is I have seen in my practice because I uh, combine a lot of techniques with homeopathy and especially the meditation techniques. I really oh. like them. And whenever I do meditative processes with people, it is not only them who are getting healed, you know, some part of myself also gets healed. So that there is, is a, you know, it's a kind of uh, process where you get healing and they are also healing and it's a, it's a wonderful thing to do. 
That's amazing, actually. That's true. Yeah. Every patient that you see also teaches you something else, something Definitely. more. Right? Every patient, every symptom that you see from the patient and this is also makes you realize. Right? homeopathy that it's not uh, it's not same for everyone even the process we do or the remedy we give or uh, whatever it is different for every person yeah so what made you get into homeopathy i mean what what was your turning point said okay i'm going to be a homeopathic doctor Actually, uh, when I took admission in homeopathy, I did not know about it. But my father <laughs> is a, my, my father was a staunch believer of homeopathy, and okay. he encouraged me to go into it. Of course, I wanted to do medical practice only, but I didn't know about the the fields, dif the different fields available. So I was okay in going anywhere, and he guided me to go into homeopathy. And then I met uh, one of my teachers, Dr. Didi Dubey, who is uh, who was my first teacher. And when I met him, he was 75 years old, and he was retired from a uh, you know this uh, pharma college, agricultural mm -hmm. college. And uh, he used to love homeopathy. And when he actually got retired, he learned homeopathy, and oh. then he started his practice. Wow. So. And you know he he guided me then, and then I met Dr. Shankaran and Dr. Jayesha and and other masters who came into my life. So and then when I saw his results, I got really inspired that yes, this is the thing which I want to do. And um, then the journey actually started in the first year of my college. That's amazing. That's amazing. So we should thank your dad to actually push you. Definitely. To see that you get into Definitely. <laughs> I want to thank him. That time though I used to think, my God, what is it? Whether I uh, uh, you know understand this organ or not. But yeah. uh, subsequently the my most interesting subject for me was organ. I loved it. Okay. okay, that's interesting. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Yamini, and we hope to have you here more often. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was a pleasure and thanks for providing this platform. I was very happy to share. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for everybody who stayed with us, watched all of this or even parts of it. You can always come back and watch this whole thing as a replay on the Facebook page, um, Facebook group. And if you are not a member of this group, uh, join this group. Uh, you'll be uh, seeing a lot more information being shared, a lot more knowledge being shared, and uh, which will hopefully help you become a better homeopath. So with this, we sign off for today, and uh, we hope to see you again, Dr. Yamini. Thank you once again. Thank you, Thank you. on behalf of Genoveva and Uta. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good time. Bye-bye. Yeah.